<laughs> Alright guys, so we have here is a equation of a line and equation of a circle. We have to figure out if it has one or two points of intersection, okay? So what we're gonna do in the first the linear equation is the equation that has no x squared in it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get x on its own. So when we get x on its own, it should be uh, x equals uh, x equals two y plus one. Are we happy with that? We could have done uh, we could have done the other way around where we got a uh, two y equals x minus one, y equals x minus one over two. But always choose the one that hasn't got the fraction if you have a choice. Okay, it's not always a choice. So we put this in here. We got two y plus one squared plus y squared plus 2 times 2y plus 1 minus 8y minus 8 equals 0. Multiply it out. 4y squared plus 4y plus 1. That's how we do 2y plus 1 by 2y plus 1. Then you have another y squared, you have a 4y, you have a 2, you have an 8y and an 8. All equals 0. <coughs> Uh, y squared and uh, that would be 5y squared. Then you have your 4y, your 4y, and your 8y. Cancel. Cancel. And um, 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 minus 8 is minus 5. Alright. Divide by 5. Difference of 2 squares. So y equals minus 1 or y equals plus one. Put that into this formula here. So what we're looking at there is going to be uh, 2y. We're going to be looking at uh, x equals 2 times minus 1 plus 1. And the other one is x equals 2 times 1 plus 1. So that will be 3 and the other one is uh, minus 1. So two points of intersection, minus one, minus one, and three, one. How many people got that out? Hey. All right. Yeah. Um, well, you said a while ago that some, that they, some, in some cases they can't be minus. Uh, that was for that was in the only time that can happen is a if it's a length, b if it's in complex numbers. There's a one or two outside in complex numbers where. You, you, you write off the minus version. Uh, in these ones, no, because it's an xy plane, Connor, and it can be minus, it, a point can be minus 1, minus 3, so it doesn't make sense to get rid of it this time around. So, yeah. you're saying, you said if you got something like y squared plus 10 equals 0. So y squared then, plus 10. So then we square minus 10. Oh, like y squared plus, plus 10. Yeah. Well, that'll be that'll be a quadratic. Uh, that that'll be a complex number then, because it's yeah, the square root of minus ten. Yeah, you said for this, like they don't really do that. No, they don't come into it. Yeah, that's what I think. That's yeah. Is it? Okay, sorry. All right. Eleven. Same deal. Uh, I'm gonna pick pick x. Five x equals three y plus seventeen x equals 2y plus 17 divided by 5. Plug into the second equation. 3y plus 17 over 5 to the squared plus y squared equals 17. Multiply out 25 on the bottom. 3y plus 17 multiplied by 3y plus 17. It's going to get me 9y squared plus 102y. It's 51y plus 51y, and then 17 by 17. Um, 289. Thanks, 289. I'm going to put the other two over 25 as well. Can anybody tell me what 25 times 17 is? 425. Sorry? 425. Okay, and then we're going to get 34y squared plus 102y, and then 289 and take away 425. Huh? 136. 136. Pretty certain they're all divisible by 34. 
No. First one is y squared, second one is 3y, and the last one is minus 4. And then we get a y, minus, y plus 4, y minus 1 equals 0, y equals 1, y equals minus 4. Two points there. We got to put them back into our x equation, which is located here. So x can, is either equal to 3 times minus 4 plus 17 over 5, or it's equal to 3 times 1 plus 17 all over 5. One of them is 4, so that is the point uh, 4, 1. And the second one is, or the first one is uh, 5 over 5, which is 1. So the other answer is 1 minus 4. Everybody alright with that? Okay, ducks. Uh, I'm going to explain. We have here is uh, 15, okay? Each, uh, each unit represents one kilometer. Okay? A plane to travel along the line y minus 10 equals y minus x minus y equals minus 10. The head lies in a large cloud of volcanic ash eruption that can be represented by the circle x squared plus y squared equals uh, 52. Each uh, unit represents one kilometer. What are the center and radius of the cloud? Well, that's easy enough, isn't it? 0, 0, root 52, right? Now we got that. Yeah. R squared is 52 and it has to be 0, 0. Find the coordinates of A and B. How do you go about finding the coordinates of A and B? You do what we do on the interception. Get X on its own or Y on its own. X is going to be equal to Y minus 10. Substitute it in. Find your two points, okay? Whatever they are. If it is considered unsafe to travel more than 10 kilometers through an ash cloud, should the plane alter its course? Okay, so the two points uh, A and B are minus 6, 4, and what's the other one? Uh, minus 4, 6. 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 Okay. Now, how would you determine if this is safe or not? Distance form, isn't it? You'd have to find out what the length of the red line is, and you can do that using the uh, distance form. Is that right? So that one you're going to do distance formula and make sure that the distance is smaller than, say specifically more than, so less than or equal to 10, because equal to 10 is okay by the, by the word not the question. Okay, find the midpoint C of AB, midpoint is very easy isn't it? Midpoint formula, yeah. The point C is the nearest point to the path on, uh, is point C is the nearest point on the plane's path to the center cloud. If it is considered safe to travel further than one kilometer inward from the edge of the cloud, should the plane alter its course? Now here's an interesting one, okay? So uh, we'll just get the midpoint very quickly. Uh, once again, what is the midpoint? Part four. Uh, oh, minus, five, five. Huh? minus five, five. Minus five, five. Okay. Yeah. What? Oh yeah, 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 you're right. Minus five, five. <coughs> okay. So the center is zero, zero, and this is uh, AB. Now there's something I just want to just want to explain one or two bits about circles to you. Okay. The first thing about a circle is that's not a circle. It's dead. Right. I'll just draw it here for a minute. Okay. The first thing you gotta remember is when you have a center of a circle. Okay. Anytime you have a card, okay, so I draw a card here. The nearest point is given to you by what formula? Or sorry, the distance from the center to this line is given to you by what formula? Uh, D equals AX1 plus D equals AX1 plus DY1 plus C modulus all over the square root of A squared plus B squared. Okay, that's the first thing that's given to you. Second thing, and this is guaranteed to happen every time. If you have two points here, yeah, your midpoint is, and this midpoint will always give you that distance we just discussed there for any chord. So the distance from this uh, blue point here to the red point will always give you the distance we spoke about here. Is that right? It has to happen. The midpoint. The midpoint of, see the two points of the chord? 
Yeah, you could use that. You can use the midpoint yeah. and then do the midpoint to the center of the circle and get the same answer a different way. Okay? Now, next thing is uh, when you're talking about uh, circles, okay? You can, talk, you can construct a triangle. Oh, wait, before I construct a triangle. Uh, if I draw a perpendicular bisector that's perpendicular to this chord and goes through that midpoint, guess where it has to go? It has to go through the center of the circle as well, every time. So if I drew another one and I wanted to find its midpoint, it, it, it'll go like it's literally the midpoint. It has to do that every time. That the midpoint of the chord and the and the center of the circle itself are on the perpendicular bisector. Yeah. Okay, that has to happen. Now, uh, if we go back to the question at hand, okay, this is what we have. <coughs> now, it says you're not allowed to travel more than one kilometer in from the middle. So what we're going to do is this. We're going to. We know that the radius is root 52. So. What we know is that this distance, uh, we'll call it the, we'll do a red line. The red line goes from here to here. Uh, where am I? Uh, shadow. Wait. Okay, so that's, what distance is that? Route 50, yeah. 2. Next thing I'm going to find is what is the distance from here to here? Mm -hmm. So it's 0, 0 to minus 5, minus 5, right? It's going to be 25 plus 25. It's going to be route 50. I know that. So the distance between here and here is root 50. And the full thing is root 52. Take away root 52 minus root 50 in the calculator. And it has to be, it has to be smaller than one for it to be safe. Is it smaller than one? 0 0.14. 0 0.14. So this means that when you're traveling, so, your, your furthest distance from the clouds occurs at this point here on your path, doesn't it? Because yeah. all the other distances are smaller. And we know that this distance is 0.14 and it's not bigger than 1, hence you're safe. That makes sense? Yeah. You will go through this on your own later on, okay? Now, the other one, I think this one's easier. The arrow must pass through the balloon. What does through the balloon mean? Okay, it must pass through the balloon. If it passes through the balloon, you're talking about a chord. If it misses entirely, you're talking about a line that just simply doesn't intersect the circle. And if it nicks it, a nick will be a tangent. Uh, if it nicks the balloon, it is unlikely that the gas will not despite bursting the balloon. So you just go through your question. If you get a tangent, the gas doesn't explode, but the balloon does. If you can't get an answer, it means it doesn't hit the balloon at all. And if you get two answers, it goes through the balloon and your question works. All right, guys, so that's it. I think 